What is going on guys, Facial Hair here, and today we have a very special interview with a very special person. And I mean special My in every sense of the special. Word. That's a good friend of mine, an upcoming streamer, Nathan Starr. You can find him on Twitch, you can find him on Twitter, you can find him on Instagram. You can find a whole lot of him on Instagram. And on top of everything else, you can find him at your local grocery store. He's on sale in aisle four. So um, today I decided to sit down with him and ask him a couple of questions, kind of get an idea for what it is to be a streamer in this position, to not necessarily be the top, but to be growing and to kind of just understand what it's like on his side as opposed to the side that we see him on, which is when we're sitting at home in our underwear watching Hiding Behind Our Keyboards. <laughs> so first thing, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, if I haven't already done a good enough job of that, tell, you know, your name, uh, if you want to give us your real name, platforms, uh, the games that you mainly play, and just little simple shit like that. All right, so I guess basics is basics. Uh, my name is uh, Brendan in real life. Uh, I took on the alias of Nathan Starr actually when my little brother was born. So, you know, that's the whole story behind it is uh, I, I, I wanted a good alias that I could use that didn't wasn't, like, weird or anything. I mean... <laughs> like this isn't weird but um yeah so i uh i stream a good variety of games one of the main games i play on the channel is uh minecraft obviously and then um i know it's garbage <laughs> you're over there <laughs> but um yeah so i play a lot of minecraft because i play with a buddy of mine and then i play some battlefield 4 all the way to some dirty bomb I'll play some Magario. Um, I just played some Magario. I, I play pretty much, you know, whatever you know people want to watch me play. I mean, and that's pretty much how it goes. Is you just it's entertainment. So. Okay, so tell everyone where else can they find <laughs> you on the interwebs? Where else can you find me? All right, so first and foremost would be twitch.tv slash nathanstar789 that is the streaming channel so following that there is youtube i have my youtube it's linked through twitch and i don't know the exact url off the top of my head i'm a big but i know i'm sorry um and then there is twitter so that's at minecraft news 15 um and then yeah that's pretty much good on finding me are, are, stalk me <laughs> are you keeping your instagram separate i keep my instagram separate because that is like my personal instagram for now i'll probably make one for the channel eventually it's gonna just gonna be pictures of you and your headphones i probably I don't, I don't know if i'm ready for that kind of commitment to you know merge my like actual life with the streaming life i don't know yeah. if i'm ready for that yet Okay, so first big question we have here, and actually some of these are from uh, from Twitter, from when I asked a couple of my friends on Twitter, and some of these are just like, you know, the normal common questions. So the first thing mm -hmm. we have is, uh, why did you start streaming? What brought you to Twitch? Ah, oh, good, good, good question. So, <laughs> I think what brought me to Twitch the most was actually... Um, I was watching uh, a lot of people, um, mostly, I don't know if you're familiar, but um, uh, Jericho, AFK, or II I. Jericho, he, um, he was playing a modded series of Minecraft, and I had seen the playbacks, the VODs that were uploaded to YouTube. I was like, gee, this looks like something that looks like it'd be kind of fun to be a part of and, you know, take part. And it seems like such a better way to interact with your fans than, you know, pre-record a video and put it up and wait for a reaction kind of thing. Where you, instead you can have your direct interaction and it, it's much more instant gratification for your failures and whatnot. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I just sort of, I was, I started off watching YouTube stuff and then some people were streaming and I, I saw it and I was like, gee, this is something that would be really cool to you know, I never thought, you know, it would take off at all, but it, it definitely has, much more than I expected. Cool. All right, so the next question, um, and this is actually, uh, <laughs> this is one of the Twitter questions that you probably get asked a lot. What headphones or, like, what equipment do you use in general for streaming? Uh, 
Uh, headphones. I use actually it doubles as my microphone for now um, because I have yet to actually pick up a decent good mic, which would be a good thing to invest in. Um, I use the Razer Black Sharks, which are a 7.1 surround sound channel headphones, and uh, I absolutely love them. To be completely honest with you, I I'd hate to leave them for anything else. Like it takes some convincing because these things. I'm telling you, man, they're good. But, uh, yeah, I used the mic that comes with them. It's a detachable boom mic, which is actually really cool because I took it on this road trip I went on recently to California, and I was able to uh, have my headphones on not have this bulky boom mic in my face while I just want to listen to music. So it's a pretty cool feature. Other than that, I use I have a Razer Naga for a mouse. I got a couple screens and... Yeah, I have a full setup video on my YouTube channel, so if you want to get more in-depth on what my setup is, go ahead and check that out. Okay, and just so everyone knows, all of his information will be linked at um, in the yep. you know description yep. underpants area yeah. of the video. All right, <laughs> so the next one, and this is a question that um, I actually got asked to ask you a lot, is what keeps you going? Like, what is it that keeps you mm. on twitch versus just like saying because you probably had a couple fuck it moments where you're just like you know what i'm done so. <sighs> i've actually only had about one moment like that and I, it's a funny story i actually um so pretty much if anyone watching this has been watching any of my streams i uh i have a series of modded minecraft and so what happened was if you're familiar with minecraft you know about creepers and stuff and legitimately, I was standing in front of all of my chests and stuff, and just everything got blown up. No items were left behind, nothing. Everything's gone, right? And I'm just sort of looking up at my webcam, and I'm just, I'm just looking at it, and I'm like, how much do I really care about this stream right now? And because I'm live, like, I can't just start, you know, cursing out the world, and, you know, because. You know that's not fair to people that you know are watching. So it was, it was definitely a, a, one of those moments that like it was hard to want to pick back up. It was actually a few days till I played that series again. But no, what keeps me going is definitely all the people that continually show support through Twitter and Twitch and YouTube. I mean, I was gone for a month on a road trip across the country, and I put up some vlogs on my YouTube, and I wouldn't expect them to get nearly 50 views each uh it was crazy i it's really all you guys that keep me going all so right. so um now here's a question that i actually find very interesting and it's more applicable now that we there's more outlets but uh why twitch as opposed to like youtube streaming or hitbox or anything like that good question um i think for me it was I, I, for one, I wasn't very familiar with other services like Twitch at the time, so that was more of that's what I was learning when I first started. But over YouTube, I think the main reason I chose Twitch to start with at first, I actually had a YouTube channel prior that had gotten very little publicity, and that's where I saw the advantage of having a streaming channel was in the fact that you could get instant viewership just by if someone clicked on the channel even if they didn't follow you it grew your channel and you would get continually more viewership and it's a much more it's a higher exposure rate than say youtube where your video will get buried and there's not really advertisement for it so i think that was why i decided to use twitch was because a i wasn't familiar with other services similar to it and i think the main reason over youtube was the instant uh exposure that you gain and that's what i was really going for because i i had been uploading videos to youtube but i i wasn't seeing results at all and it, they they weren't the best videos but at the same time you know two videos on a video isn't really gratifying to continue doing what you're trying to do so yeah that's that's why i chose twitch okay so um the next question and i think this actually is asked by a couple other people that I know that are uh, streaming, and they're not necessarily at 
your level. They're kind of where I was when I stopped streaming. So yeah, how do you keep Twitch a part of your life as opposed to being your life? Hmm, that's interesting. See, I never thought of it. That that, that has a many that has many angles to that question. So I guess I'll approach it from the most obvious angle of how, like how do you stop it from consuming everything that you know like just always wanting to do it or the flip side of the coin having your whole life on there. So I mean, I guess for me it's it's really important to have a schedule with your streaming, and when you have say like I'm gonna stream 5 p.m on Thursday and then I'm gonna stream 8 p.m. on this game on Friday per se not actual like but for example it, it really helps you stop yourself because like for just this past stream I, I was like I'll hop in for like an hour and just hang out with some guys and stream I wound up streaming for about three hours and that's really what you gotta look out for because you, you really got to you got to limit yourself at the same time as you got to put yourself out there. So I don't know if that answers your question too well because yeah. feel free to expand upon it if you want to. Well, but. the uh, well, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's keeping a schedule and not having. Yeah. And not having you wanting to constantly stream and something that you actually mentioned earlier is not streaming for too long. Yes. That is very important, and, and it's it's very hard because at first that's what you feel like you have to do. Is mm -hmm. the longer you're live, the more exposure you get. Which, in actuality, it is important to be live for a long time when you're first starting because it gives you the exposure you need. Because especially if you are live at four in the morning when no one else is, you are going to get more viewers. So definitely don't keep yourself short to like say half an hour if you have two hours to stream because you you definitely want to take advantage of that but you don't you want to set yourself a limit you don't want to just let oh i'll stop whenever kind of thing mm -hmm. so yeah okay. so um and this is actually an interesting question it's another one for, that i got from uh other people that i asked what part of of twitch makes you the angriest like what do you want changed as a user of Twitch? Like, what bothers you the most? Hmm. I guess it would have to be... I wish there was an option for when it came to moderating the chat. An in-between of a permanent ban and having the timeout. Where instead of ha just the timeout in the ban, there is a kick for, say, like, five minutes option. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was extended longer than, say, a timeout, but it wasn't a permanent ban. And right. I'm sure there's things there that people have figured out how to do, but it's not easily, like, done. And I wish it was better um, administratable by, say, the streamer or a moderator to, you know, punish someone who hasn't been conforming to the rules of a chat but at the same time not permanently ban them because you don't want to ban everyone that comes in and tries to be a jokester because then you're not going to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay. I think that's my biggest gripe. Okay. So, um, another thing that... Uh, well, another thing that we have here actually is an interesting question. What is your favorite moment of streaming, like of all your time spent? I think my favorite moment was when I hit my 100th follower and it's cliche but it really was it was probably my favorite moment to date when that 100th person hit the follow button and I saw it pop up on the screen and I just it, it was so gratifying just to see all the time and effort put in be recognized and you know it it's not much, but, you know, it means a lot. Every last person means a lot to you. So I think that's the number one thing that sticks out. Okay. So what – and this is another cliched question, but it has to be asked. Yeah. What yeah. advice do you have for people that maybe, like, 
just downloaded OBS and or XSplit or whatever service you want to use, yeah, and are like about ready to make their Twitch account, what would you kind of grab them by the hand and say, hey, before you start, consider this? I think what I would have to say to them is, think about what think about your goals. What do you want out of this? Like, is this just going to be a small time hobby for you? Or do you see yourself growing a channel? Because it gets to a point where it's no longer, and I'm not quite there yet, but it really does get to a point where it's not just a casual, let me just put on a button so some buddies can watch me play this. You are entertaining people and you have to understand that it's if you just sit there and you play your game and you don't say anything and you don't interact with people you're not going to get results and people aren't going to watch you and if that's your goal is to get people to watch you and people to laugh and you know entertain you got to understand that there is work to be done and it it's fun but it's tiring and you know i got you know not to self advertise or anything but tomorrow is i i've promised my fans an eight hour stream and you know i haven't done anything more than six hours before and i'm scared that i'm not gonna be able to entertain for that long because you know you get going and it's tiring it really is so anyone that's wanting to start who's right there on the start and i say really consider the amount of work that you're gonna have to put in but at the same time understand that it is worth it if you want to put in the work so yeah i don't discourage anyone from trying so all right um and just so everybody knows i will be there present for the eight hour stream tomorrow um and so definitely come and check it out if you uh enjoyed this video however more likely than not with my youtube upload schedule you probably won't see this video for over a week so i'm sorry yeah about that. But um, yeah, <laughs> they're definitely uh, it. It definitely will be a lot of fun. Um, and not to keep from this going any longer because we've been here for a while. But so last question of um, what things would you like to pass on or kind of leave? Like I know we just asked this, but what overall advice do you have uh, for? twitch streamers not necessarily new people but maybe something else that the veterans have forgotten i think it uh, it's a big portion of it is really remember your people who got you where you are and and think of every last follower or even if you're at the point where you have subscribers you need you gotta think of every last person as if they are you know the like person who got you where you are in life because i mean I cherish every last person, and I feel like that's really contributed to the growth of my channel. So, I really feel like if you've gotten to a point where, say, you got like 800 followers, you really got to make a point to say if you have 80 viewers or 100 viewers in your stream, you got you got to get you got to make sure that you're interacting with them and you're acknowledging people because. The last thing someone wants to do is turn, tune into a stream and you know have the expectation to interact with the play the streamer and have a good time and then get ignored because that that's that's something that's going to discourage people and they're not going to want to watch. So I think that's one of the biggest things as I'd say to any streamer is acknowledge your fans. Well, I actually just got two questions sent to me real quick and. Initially, <laughs> I wanted to end it, but these are actually two very good questions. So, okay. what do you think of Twitch expanding? And what I mean by that is there's a lot of people now, because Twitch started as a gaming into entertainment platform. But yes. you have these other people that are using Twitch for other things now. So, what do you think of Twitch expanding in that realm? Do you think it should stay pure to gaming or... No, I don't think that there's any reason to limit it, per, limit it per se. Um, there, there's plenty of good reasons to use it other than gaming. I mean, there's the WAN show with Linus Tech Tips. I love watching that. It could, and that's 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 a perfect example of something that's not gaming and is very fun to be a part of and watch. Um, there, there's plenty of like. 
broadcasts that aren't gaming that are can be highly entertaining i mean heck you could do a whole stream where you're not even gaming and it's just a webcam of you making stupid faces and if it entertains people why not i mean like there's no reason to limit it i mean there's gonna be pe people who have been on twitch forever who are probably gonna say you know keep it how it was you know that kind of thing but i don't see a reason why to limit it i i encourage it all right, and the last this is the last question. It's a very interesting question, and it's something you and I have talked about, um, quote unquote, off camera, before. Um, okay. What do you think of <clears throat> live streaming as a whole moving to the mobile platform with things like Meerkat, Periscope, and Stream? Hmm. I think that it's a good concept, but I've yet to see a practical version of it and when i say practical version i don't mean something that actually works per se um i say it from the standpoint of i know myself i don't have unlimited data so for a lot of people that also is true so the, the the prospect of being able to move live stream into a mobile platform you gotta a have a high upload speed you and b you gotta have the data to do it you're going to be on the go and do a mobile stream which i think is the goal of those kind of things so for me i i like the direction it's headed but i don't yet see the practicality for the majority of people whereas with uh pc oriented you know browser based twitch is what i'm trying to get at not just pc because you can stream consoles and stuff um, with browser-based Twitch, that platform, per se, is already spoken for because m the, ma the vast majority of people, their internet at home isn't limited. I mean, it, even if it is limited, you have enough to where you can do it. So, I, I, I like the idea, the concept of it, and it's well done when you have Wi-Fi, but... Um, I'd like to see them find a way to make it more efficient, maybe on data, if that's possible. But yeah, um, I like the concept, but I don't know if it's practical for everyone. All right. Well, um, that's all the questions and uh, very much all the time we have. So um, <laughs> I, I want to thank you again for coming out, Nathan. And Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, so yes, uh, again, all of his stuff will be below, and until next time, guys, this is The Facial Hair, and I hope you have a wonderful day.